From ground-based grappling to stand-up striking, here are seven of the most effective martial arts forms. These tenacious techniques have created some of the deadliest human weapons on the planet. Number 7. Silat Roughly translated as fighting skill, silat is an umbrella term used in reference to the various fighting styles that have originated in the Malay archipelago. Depending on the region, silat may vary in name and technique. In Malaysia, it is called silat Malayo, while Indonesian silat is referred to under the full name Penchak silat. Nevertheless, there are core similarities between the different forms of the martial art. Its origins rely heavily on oral tradition. Some experts have found a connection between silat and the fighting styles of ancient Persia and places creation somewhere between the years 600 and 1200 AD. There are some similarities between Silat and Chinese martial arts, such as taking inspiration from nature and the movements of various animals and building them into the fighting style. Silat Harimau, for example, adapts the movements of the tiger to suit the needs of combat. Harimau involves locks and breaks achieved through fingers in the esophagus, power blows to the head and neck, and pukulan or multiple striking. Regardless of the region, Silat has a wide range of takedowns and deadly strikes which are commonly delivered from a much lower stance than other martial arts. The lower stance work also gives Silat great fluidity as its practitioners can transition very fluently between various facets of fighting displaying great adaptability both to open environments as well as closed spaces. Silat is not concerned solely with unarmed combat. The arsenal of a seasoned Silat practitioner would most likely include a wave-like sword called the Chris, considered both a spiritual object and a weapon, or the Karambit dagger. In the hands of an experienced fighter, the karambit is extremely dangerous. The hilt has a ring at the end which the wielder holds with their index finger that facilitates the underhanded grip on the distinctly curved blade. The wielder can unleash attacks from unusual angles that are hard to defend against. Number 6. Dambay Dambe is a vicious form of fighting with roots in ancient Egypt, commonly associated with the Hausa people of West Africa. Many of the terminology and techniques allude to warfare, and it was traditionally practiced as a means of preparing the men for war. Most of those who practiced Dambe were part of the Hausa butcher caste groups, and the tradition developed into a fighting challenge that commonly took place during the local harvest festival. Nowadays, companies of boxers from various groups travel to compete in outdoor matches that are accompanied by drumming and a ceremony. Usually, Dambe competitors are fairly matched in size, despite the fact that there are no formal weight classes. The three rounds that make up a match do not have a time limit and normally end when an opponent's body, knee, or hand touches the ground, when an official or one of the fighters calls a halt, or when there is no activity. To knock an adversary down is referred to as killing the opponent. The main weapon in Dambe is the strong side fist, also known as the spear. The strong side fist is wrapped in a cloth covered by a tightly knitted cord. Although currently considered to be an illegal practice, up until recently, Fighters would often dip the spear in a mixture of sticky resin and broken glass. The lead hand, also known as the shield, is held facing the opponent and may be used to hold or grab. The lead leg is often wrapped in thick chain and can be used both defensively and offensively. Both the lead leg and the unwrapped leg can be used to kick. The strikes in Dambe can cause severe damage, and that is why timing is one of the key aspects that fighters must consider in order to avoid serious injury. Number 5. Veil Tudo Regarded as the precursor of today's mixed martial arts, Veil Tudo is a full contact combat sport which originated in Brazil that has very few rules attached to its name, which roughly translates as anything goes. It originated in the 1920s when it was showcased at circuses and shows throughout Brazil. Traditional Veil Tudo is aimed at pure combat. Practitioners do not wear gloves, there are no weight classes, and headbutts, as well as hits to the throat or testicles, are allowed. Aside from moves that will be deemed illegal in most martial arts, such as a standing opponent hitting a grounded one, Veil Tudo fighters may also make use of techniques such as locks, sweeps, grappling and striking, submissions or takedowns. Much like the modern better organized and safer forms of mixed martial arts, training in Veil Tudo involved a broader understanding of multiple disciplines as well as intense physical conditioning. It evolved from the sideshow brawls into a finer science, but due to its violent and bloody nature, it failed to gain mainstream support and was slowly forced underground. The UFC or Ultimate Fighting Championship rose in its place. Even though in the early stages UFC matches bear the resemblance to the violence of Veil Tudo, it gradually progressed into a safer competition with millions of supporters worldwide. 
Number 4. Mu Thai Mu Thai was developed in Thailand and its roots can be traced back to the middle of the 18th century during the battles between Siam and the Burmese of the Kong Bao dynasty. Thai folklore tells the story of famous Siamese fighter Nai Kanam Tom, who after being captured by the Burmese invading troops, was forced to fight during a seven-day festival organized by King Sien Bayushin. The Burmese ruler wanted to show how Burmese boxing would fear against Moi Boran, which would later become Mu Thai, practiced by Nai Kanom Tom. After using an onslaught of various vicious strikes to take down 10 consecutive opponents with no rest between the fights, Nai Kanam Tom won his freedom and was given a gift of two beautiful Burmese wives. The king was so impressed with the performance that he declared that every part of Nai Kanam Tom's body was blessed with venom. Mu Thai gradually grew in popularity and became a national sport in Thailand. It gained an international reputation during the 20th century after several notable practitioners of other martial arts were defeated in tournaments by Muay Thai fighters, also known as the art of eight limbs. It is a fighting style that enables its practitioners to use their knees, fists, elbows and shins combined with a series of clinches in full contact bouts. Aside from training routines that include many staples of combat sport fitness such as abdominal exercises, bodyweight resistance exercises, jump rope or running, Muay Thai fighters also undergo a ruthless conditioning regime. Because many of the strikes involve the use of the shin, they harden the bones through a process called cortical remodeling. By hitting bags filled with sand, dense heavy bags or even trees, they break down the bone tissue in their shins, which is then replaced by a new, harder tissue through a process called ossification. Muay Thai strikes are powerful and explosive, and while many fighters use reach and distance to control the pace of a fight, the hardest hits take place during the clinch. Unlike Western boxing, Muay Thai fighters are not separated once they clinch. Instead, they employ various stand-up grappling techniques to deliver punishing knee or elbow strikes from close quarters. Number 3. Sistema the combat style practiced by the infamous Russian Spetsnaz, Sistema focuses on controlling the most important parts of the opponent's body, such as the knees, waist, ankles, elbows, shoulders, and neck through critical hits and pressure points. The central principles of this Russian martial art are based on understanding the laws of anatomy and biomechanics, with a focus on exploiting the natural weakness of the human form. It does not have fixed patterns of movement. Training involves drills and sparring that include grappling, hand-to-hand -hand combat, firearms training, and knife fighting. Sistema also teaches its practitioner how to confront multiple attackers, some of whom may also be armed. The body has to be filled with explosive potential, effortless movement, endurance, and flexibility. The practitioner has to be free from tensions in a psychological state that is calm and free from fear, anger, pride, or self-pity. Breathing, relaxation, and fluidity of motion are the main focuses of training in Sistema. Another important aspect is using the attacker's momentum against him. It is a system based on strengthening in the physical, psychological, and spiritual sides of an individual. Russia was attacked by various countries throughout its history, from the Mongols to the Huns. Each new enemy brought a particular fighting style to the country, forcing Russian soldiers to adapt. Thus, Sistema was born. Although its origins are uncertain, some historians have traced the martial art back to the 10th century. Number 2. Krav Maga Krav Maga is a combat system developed for the Israeli Security Forces, Mossad and Shin Bet, and for the Israel Defense Forces, or IDF. It is widely regarded as one of the deadliest martial arts systems ever created, borrowing elements from Aikido, Judo, Oxin, Wrestling, Muay Thai, and others. It is widely known for its brutal efficiency. Krav Maga practitioners place great emphasis on the instinctive nature of combat, situational awareness, and train to confront and overcome real-world situations. They are taught how to escape chokes and hold as well as how to deal with attackers wielding knives, bats, or firearms. One of the central ideas is to use aggression and brutal counter-attacking techniques to end the fight as quickly as possible. Whenever a physical confrontation cannot be avoided, Krav Maga in its original form took the most simple and practical elements from other fighting styles and incorporated them into a system that could be rapidly taught to military conscripts. Some of its basic principles include simultaneous attack and defense, counter-attacking as quickly as possible, continuing to strike an opponent until they are completely completely incapacitated, the use of simple and easily repeatable strikes, and targeting the body's most vulnerable points, such as the eyes, face, 
throat, groin, solar plexus, knees or fingers. Krav Maga was developed by Hungarian Israeli martial arts Imi Lichtenfeld. He used his street fighting experience and his training as a wrestler and boxer to defend the Jewish quarter from fascist groups in Bratislava, Czechoslovakia, during the mid to late 1930s. After migrating to Israel in the late 1940s, Lichtenfeld began providing combat training to what would later become the IDF. Nowadays, several organizations such as the US Marine Corps and British SAS have begun to teach variations of Krav Maga. Although it has a number of core principles, Krav Maga is a fighting system that continuously grows and evolves, always incorporating new techniques in congruence with the real-life situations. Number 1. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or BJJ was developed into its current form through the various practices, experiments and adaptations of Kodokan Judo performed by Helio and Carlos Gracie who passed their knowledge to their extended family. Today, the Gracie name is synonymous with this martial art. The central concept behind BJJ is that a weaker, smaller opponent can successfully defend against a stronger and heavier assailant. In the beginning, to illustrate this point, the Gracie brothers will accept numerous challenges from practitioners of other martial arts arts, many of whom were more massive than they were, and defeat them in open combat. This was a direct contributing factor to the creation of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. BJJ places great emphasis on groundwork, leverage, and proper technique. It influenced the perception in the mixed martial arts world that fighting should only be focused on stand-up positions. BJJ practitioners will often take the fight to the ground and employ various chokeholds and joint locks to submit their opponents. Even though in a controlled or competitive environment, fighters released the lock following a tap out. In the real world, BJJ can be used to break or dislocate bones. Furthermore, various types of chokes cut the supply of oxygen to the brain and may result in serious health complications if not released in time. Giant men have appeared on the internet. The most famous of these was the story about a giant human skeleton uncovered in the desert during gas exploration in Saudi Arabia. Pictures were included, linked with the Islamic story of the Prophet Hud and the powerful giant tribe of Ad. 